Hello, McFluffy52 here, back with some more Phyrexia All Will Be One action, and today we're taking another look at Mono Green to see if we can make something that really pops off with Bloated Contaminator in what I'm calling Bloated Green. So we got a bunch of counters here to work with Bloated Contaminator, which has Trample, Toxic 1, whenever it deals combat damage to a player, Proliferate. So if we have Evolving Adaptive out there, it gets bigger. If we have Query and Beast Caller out there and it has a counter on it, it gets bigger. If Gallic Reader has a counter on it, it gets bigger. If Simian Simulacrum puts counters on something, that thing gets bigger. When this puts counters on something, it gets bigger. If Old Spinoderm gets more oil counters, so we don't have to sack it quite yet. Uh, that's basically the idea of the deck. Let's go hop into some games. There'll be a full deck tech at the end of the video, so if you're interested in that, stick around. We're going to go see if we can climb the rank ladder with this deck. Also, if you're interested in more Phyrexia All Will Be One videos, make sure to subscribe because I have several decks uh, brewed up that I want to want to showcase. As well as some decks that I saw other people playing that I, I want to give a try. Let us see, how can we do? Currently Diamond 2, I did some climbing with this deck as well as another deck that I have yet to show off. Uh, but this deck actually not too bad. All right, this is maybe a bit of a worse hand than the previous one. We got to turn one play. Load Contaminator is sort of like a very nice piece in this deck. It's a 4 4, so it's really hard with um, opposing like mono red decks to deal with. Looks like our opponent is playing uh, Double Rock Priest off, of, off the rip is. This is disgusting, uh, to say the least. Are you playing Simic? Are you gonna actually be playing the Simic? I know, we're just feeling... Feeling extra lucky today, aren't we? Well, probably gonna lose this game because our opponent has quite the bloody hand here. Uh, that's assuming that they are playing Simic and they have more target spells. They might have like a Tyvar stand here, in that case they can end up pumping and killing our Evolving Adaptive. New card from Phyrexia All will be one. Super good card because you can use one mana to just give your creature Hexproof and Indestructible. And then you can also pump more mana into it to actually like give it extra damage. Nope, our opponent's just gonna go for the turn three kill. Alright, we'll stick through these triggers. Actually no, this is taking too long. But you can see they got nine more poison counters to go. I've already conceded. I don't know why the concede animation is taking a fair amount of time, but yeah. Nothing we can do about somebody who has double rot priest into a march of burgeoning life into a swirling march of the swirling mist. That is the nut draw. That is that is why the uh, that that card might get bent. <laughs> because what could we have done there? We would have needed it like a turn two ossification or a turn one cut down or something like that. And even if we removed one, they would still have had double, uh, double rot priests. We would have need two removal spells, or we would need like a turn three <laughs> sweeper. Green doesn't have any removal. Is the unfortunate thing. You can say fight spells, but fight spells are not good uh because well green doesn't have that great creatures opponent and us we are just chilling here apparently because well magic arena let me know what you guys think of like where is bloated contaminator best played because i really wanted to make a deck or i really wanted to make a mono green like stoppy deck and then i really wanted to make a deck around bloated contaminator because I think it's just such a cool and like powerful card. Uh, the four toughness, four power, and trample, and then proliferate and toxic. It's a very nice card. It fits well in toxic decks. It also fits well in like proliferate decks in green. Uh, there's not that many like proliferate cards in green, unfortunately. Kind of sad about that. Because you got blue and black popping off with proliferate. You got white with tons of toxic, but green. We didn't really get much, did we? We got Tyrannix Rex, which is a, a good card, I guess, but it's just, 
it's not uh if you're paying seven mana you and you're hoping to cast a creature that costs seven mana you're probably forfeiting a little bit of early game power to ramp up so you're probably uh suffering some life loss in that case uh the titan of industry can be just as valuable of a threat <clears throat> i think the best the best home I, I said this in my the video that i recorded yesterday where we tried a kind of mono green like land heavy ramp deck uh but i think the best place for tyrannix rex is in a sort of like combo deck if you have like chaotic transformation type decks that that is probably where you want to be playing it question is do we need to hold up removal here because we could wait to play our bloated contaminator and turn four this deck you do like the idea of this deck is we're playing aggro and we're curving out real hard um <clears throat> okay we'll go ahead and play this Playing one with the Curian Beast Caller. And then we can play the Blood Contaminator next turn with some backup. With our Tyvar stands. Because I really don't want to lose it. Opponent, though, they're uh, Jund Valuing real hard right now with a Bank Buster and a Fable. Fable is such a crazy card. Oh my god. Okay, uh, maybe we don't play anything and see if our opponent wants to block our stuff. I could trade with this, but that reveals the fact that we're playing Tyvar stands. So I think we just take the damage and hope that our opponent does not expect the Tyvar stand that will kill them. Ow. Yep, Shieldred being one of the most broken cards in standard. Not really, but also really. Go ahead, swing in. Shit, we shouldn't have done the evolving adaptive. Because we want them to block the beast color. Well, that's fine. Because we can only pump this up three, and that's not enough. Uh, okay, well, is it worth keeping it? No, I don't think. That was a punt on my part. Should have only attacked in with a query and beast caller. I miscounted. Thought we'd be able to pump it up four, but no, we can only pump it three. Duh. So that that is a mistake. We could have gotten our opponent to uh, potentially lose this shieldred, which would have been real good. And I think from this point we just lose. Just straight up Jun value. Keeps and loads of it. Resolve. The double Kiki Jiki with the Vindictive Flame Stoker. There is no way in hell we're getting back into this. But we'll give it a go. We'll see what we can do. Oh, it does not want to attack in. Yes, we get to lose life because Shieldred, easy money. Alright. Go ahead, swing in here, I think. We our only hope is to get rid of their stuff by them blocking like idiots. That's the hope. Five R stand. I initially was playing Gaia's like, whatever it's called, and uh, the the two minute instant. I think it's called Gaia's stand. I don't know. Maybe it's not Gaia's stand. Anyways, it gives like a plus one plus one counter, blah blah blah, and like okay. our opponent actually goes for the block, which is huge. Uh, we'll pump this up one. We can kill that. Yep. Opponent gonna draw a card with Bankbuster here. Thankfully, they do not actually have removal. So we are also chilling in that regard. We're going to go pump up our Bloated Contaminator one. We could have actually played Evolving Adaptive here, but I, I wanted to hold off because I didn't know how our opponent was going to block. 
We put, we pump up our bloated contaminator one so it can trample over and kill, or like uh, proliferate rather. So we got rid of two of their biggest threats, honestly. Yep. And we had evolving adaptive. My opponent though here has vindictive flame so we're staring down a pretty annoying board from our opponent. They also have Kiki Jiki, so they can copy the Vindictive Flame Stoker and then sacrifice it. They are playing the Disgusting Jund value pile, and they get Glissa. That is pretty much game over. Yeah, that's uh, that's gonna be it. We can't win against Glissa, because she has first strike and then death touch. So even if we have a massive trampler that should theoretically murder them, uh, it doesn't matter, because Glissa, right? Glissa goes ahead, swings in, or like uh, blocks it, and then it dies before it gets to trample over. Unfortunate. You can see that we did go on a bit of a win streak here, but not lucky so far today. I played one game with this to warm up, and then I it was like, you know, let's, uh, this will be the video that I, I make. And... Apparently, not so, not so hot. All right, will we demote from Diamond 2? That is the real question. I think we're at Diamond 2, right? Oh my god, what is this hand? Tyvar, Sand, Tyvar, Sand, Tyvar, Sand. Yeah, I get it. Tyvar was a cool character. <laughs> what are these poker hands? <laughs> Triple Evolving Adaptive. I mean, I guess we'll keep. Evolving Adaptive is not bad. It's not great, unfortunately. I f like, I initially was super high on Evolving Adaptive, but I think you really need Proliferate. Because uh, you just need to be playing bigger and bigger creatures, but green doesn't have big creatures. Like, we, we get the Bloated Contaminator, yeah, and then you have, like, the Green Beast Caller, but... You need, like, multiple good 2-drops, multiple good 3-drops, and, and multiple good, like, 1-drops, I feel like. At least multiple good 2-drops, and there's no, there's not that many good 2-drops in green that enable Evolving Adaptive, unfortunately. At least if you're going for a beatdown. Yeah, you could play something with, like, 3 toughness, such as the Armored Scrap Gorger, which will buff this, but then you're not swinging in with a Quirion Beast Caller. <clears throat> that's the that's the problem with green it's just not quite enough good creatures on the curve so that's what green has like black has removal white has removal blue has bounce counter spells uh and they all have like equally good creatures red i i don't think i need to say much about red red just goes in and burns you out right Green is uh not in the hottest of spots. We see but we should do seem to be winning with it. I think that might just be because, you know, it's it's a matter of who you get matched up against. If you're playing against a control deck that's slow to uh, deploy their sweeper or like find their sweeper, you win. If you play against like a red deck and you curve out well, you win. Uh, if you play against like decks with way too much removal, then you're you're a little bit in in a bad spot. Though that's partially why we have Cemetery Prowler here. Is if somebody plays removal, we get to exile a creature card from our graveyard. Um, it says whenever it enters the battlefield or attacks, exile a card from the graveyard. And spells you cast uh, cost one less for each card type they share with cards exiled by Cemetery Prowler. So if they kill one of our evolving adaptive here, that's fine. We get to exile it and get a discount on our creature spells. I really do like this card because it also has vigilance and it's a 3-4, so it's got that anti-lightning strike technology, right? Uh, but, 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 still, still not the craziest. All right, um, we'll just go ahead and play Cemetery Prowler here. Get our evolving adaptives going. I think we'll go ahead and swing in. 
If our opponent wants to trade with her tenacious underdog, that's fine because they die. We attack in with Cemetery Prowler next turn. We get a discount on our Evolved Sleeper, and then we can play it. Or Evolved Spider Germ, not Evolved Sleeper. I'll think of the black card that they're probably about to drop next turn. Probably not. We probably play a Liliana and take it down. That's my bet. <clears throat> That is the problem with black right now, is they got a lot of edicts. And you can give anything hexproof and indestructible, but that doesn't stop a sacrifice effect. Or a sweeper. Well, indestructible does stop sweepers. Doesn't stop um, farewell. So yeah, you really need to kill a control deck before they farewell. Uh, and we, we have like a decent curve here, like... Mm, our opponent gets the exile off first. What a turd. Alright, let's see if we can get our opponent here. Yep. You want to play that game? We can play that game. Hmm? Hmm? Block with the graveyard trespasser. Come on now. You know you want to. It's a lot of fun. <clears throat> That's I. Th this is why I really enjoy Tyra Stand in this deck because you can just. This is like your your good combat trick. I think this card is honestly made this deck actually playable. <laughs> Pump it up one. That's all we need to do. Target creature we control. Auto pay. Bam! In the graveyard you go. Now we actually have a pretty nice board state going for us. Our opponent has. A full group of cards though, so we're probably just going to get Invoke Despair into Invoke Despair into Invoke Despair and lose. It happens. Or a Shieldred right here. A Shieldred right here also is bad. Our opponent though, apparently very, very, like struggling to play the Bono de Black deck where you just play things on curve and it's pretty straightforward to be honest. <clears throat> Like, they could play Liliana, and then play Invoke Despair next turn. I mean, heck, they could even play Liliana and make us discard our last card. Finally made a choice. They probably should have held that to our turn, but fair enough. You do you, Chief. We can't stop the cut down on the Evolve Sleeper. Or on the Evolving Adaptive. I'm a, man, I'm gonna butcher that so many times. Bankbuster. Bankbuster. Uh, ooh. I think we actually go for the Besaju on the Bankbuster. I'm gonna go for it. Because we don't want them drawing any more cards. Though we're giving them, we're giving them Invoke to stay our mana, and that is pretty much game over if they do have it. But let's test if they do. Is this... Man, uh, are we just going to lose all the games I play whenever I record? Man, we were going on a win streak. That is bad that that flips tonight. <laughs> oh, Mono Black. It never fails to, like, hit absolute everything important. Do you have another? Show us opponent. Or Liliana. Either works. Or Shield Rosetic, you know, everything that counters. This. I think if they get removal for a Spino Durham, we might just concede. Yep, Graveyard Glutton deals with graveyards, gains them life, deals damage. Basically, just better on curve draw. Ah. <laughs> uh... Playing green is rough. You really just need to care about. Right. Opponent, are you going to think this hard about every single move? Because I think I might move on to the next game. Managed to double spell for us so we get to attack in with Evolved Spinoderm and not lose it. Playing three on Beast Caller here so that maybe we can keep our Evolved Spinoderm until it's sacked. 
Uh, it doesn't really matter. They're going to play Shield Grid next turn and just completely put themselves into the game. <sighs> or the Invoke. That's literally all they need to do. There is no put yourself into the game card in green, I feel like. That, that is like the one problem. Oh, well, <laughs> one of the many problems I've been complaining about this entire video. This is just... There's no, there's no card quite like Invoke or Shieldred, but yeah, I mean, Mono Black's at the peak of all standard right now. Besides Soldiers, Mono... But it depends on what format you're talking about. If you're talking about best of three, black decks dominate it. Any sort of... Uh, well, actually, that's a bit of a lie. Any sort of deck with black in it is dominating, as well as uh, big white, like... <clears throat> Think of like Sanctuary Warden using Ossifications. Uh, and then you have... In Standard, we have other junk. Alright, uh, do we play the counters on Evolve Spinal Dream? I kind of like that. I mean, we're... we either win here or we lose, so... Unfortunately, we are giving our opponent the Tenacious Underdog to Blitz in. <laughs> Alright. No green card draw, so... We would never draw into a solution to that match. Alright. Will we win any match? Find out next time. No, I'm joking. We're gonna play another game. Why can't we win? I don't understand. It's just... I think maybe it's like... There is probably a bit of a difference. Playing in the morning versus playing in the evening of the day. Like in the beginning of the day or at the end of the day. Maybe I'm just playing against a bunch of... Like hyper sweats. Who, you know... Oh, we have to... Get in our games, get in our wins this morning and then move on or something. I don't know. <laughs> and then in the evening you just have people going around and that's why I actually managed to win with this deck. I do wonder. This hand seems kind of crap. Hmm. They're playing to fairy. Avatar. Maybe it's a good idea. Alright, we're going to take the... Uh, come on now. There we go. We're going to take the Tyvar stand because we see Teferi. The opponents, though, maybe it would have been a better idea just to plan to curve out. Okay, I, you know, I eat everything. Oh, it's less than enchants, my bad. Okay. <laughs> I do love me some Thrun. I know, like, a lot of people are super high on this card, but, like... To me, it's so, it's so, uh, it's not playable, for the most part. It, like, one or two is a curve topper, but, like, you shouldn't be getting to this card. Just my thoughts. If you're reaching and playing out your throne often, I guess you've got more, less of an aggro strategy than this deck, but in this... In this deck, it feels like you want to be finishing out before you even find a run. Or find a run and be able to play it, because, you know, it kind of lands off from playing it. Opponent pretty much has the nut draw. Turn 3, Hollowed Haunting with the Jukai Naturalist and the gener Generous Visitor. I think we're just gonna lose another one. Alright, I will give it, like, the smallest try here. And then maybe concede, because I really want to get to a game where we can actually win. <laughs> but, uh... I swear to god, this is not... This deck's not this awful. Oh, <laughs> My goodness. <laughs> uh, 
it must be that there's like a difference in queue in the morning versus at night. I have no idea. We're getting thrashed. Absolutely thrashed. Like, uh, <laughs> do it. <laughs> what? Is this just a symptom of high variance? Like, I, I give up. No, no point in mulliganing if we're gonna lose anyways. <laughs> At least we get a Gallagher Eaters here, so we can throw up something else on our team. Good player, Besage you. We might actually have a win here. This is opponent. This opponent's not been moving super fast in terms of their board state. We'll go ahead and put this on Gallagher Eaters. I don't like to put counters on the Evolving Adaptive, because if we get our uh, Bloated Contaminator... If we put plus one counters on it... The key part of it is it says whenever a creature enters the battlefield under your control, if that creature has greater power and toughness than Evolving Adaptive. So if you buff the power and toughness of Evolving Adaptive, then uh, then we don't have a good attack. Okay, let's see. Let Simeon Simulacrum die here, I think. Because that means we can return it next turn. Or maybe we don't attack in with it and we use it as a blocker, but if they choose to try and mitigate damage. No, we save it for next turn because we're pressing on lethal here. And then next turn we swing in for the lethal. This is what the deck wants to do! This is what the deck wants to do! Oh my goodness. It just took an opponent doing absolutely nothing for the first freaking... How many turns? Four turns? I mean, yeah. Boom! Finally a win. Boom. It was a freaking 1 minute and 52 second match. That's what you gotta do. You got to curve out, and then curve out, and then curve out. That's what this deck wants to do. That's, I think, the best option for green. None of this thrun, none of this late game, because you don't win the late game, because you can't draw cards, because you're just green. You don't have any removal, so if the opponent ever plays a bomb, you're giving them more time to play bombs. Uh, you can't answer their bombs. Like, green on its own is absolutely horrible. <laughs> I think you really just got, got to embrace that... Crap. <laughs> this is GG. We can't win this. This is Soldiers. Soldiers is just the best deck in standard, no? Uh, best deck in standard, best of one, to be clear. Opponent flashing in the reinforcements, and then they play the Valiant Veteran. Oh, my bad. In the trenches. Okay. Whatever pump spell you choose. Fair enough. Uh, yeah, we just take it like a boss. And what do we do? I mean, we get big creatures that we can potentially block here with. So let's keep on, let's keep on keeping on. Uh, we want a Simeon Simulacrum onto our bloated contaminator here, because that's the ideal situation. Yeah, you can have your stupid Thalia. You silly, silly. Uh, I think we're going to actually play the Evolved Spinoderm here. We need another big, big butt on the field. If our opponent is not interested in attacking in. In the trenches here, kind of spooky. Uh, I don't want to hover it, but the second ability of In the Trenches, you can pay 5 mana and exile something off the opponent's board. Sure. Sure. <laughs> you know. <laughs> you do you, King. You do you. Ah. This is this is peak mono white. Our opponent probably has an indestructible spell or a pump spell for Thalia, I think, but might as well block it, right? Get them to use it, and then we can go ahead and block the reinforcements, I think. And then, yeah. Or we could block the token, since it has the same exact effect. But no, if it's, uh, if they play, what is the soldier that says plus one counter at the beginning of combat? Uh, are we just dead? 
No. Okay, so we need to kill them this next turn. Can we kill them? Uh, we need a double land. Or we can play Thrun here, and then we're chilling in terms of... Well, then they exile something from our board if they have a land drop. Damn. Oh, uh, how much damage we got? We got... One, two, three, four... We have like eight plus five, so 13, if I can count. And then we can put two more plus one counters with Bloated Contaminator... Or with Simeon Simeon Anchor onto Bloated Contaminator. Then we're gonna have a bit more damage, but that's not enough. So, do we just play Thrun, or do we play Simeon Simulacrum and Tyvar Sand? I think we play Simeon Simulacrum and Tyvar Sand. Uh, we hold up Tyvar Sand. Taking down soldiers, this is a task and a half. Uh, we can put this on Bloated Contaminator, I think that's our best bet. We want to keep Bloated Contaminator around, and Simeon Simulacrum is nice in the graveyard. No attacks. Opponent, show us how you can actually win when we have the bigger creatures. Beat us on the... <laughs> ah! <laughs> Man, it's hard to be fucking soldiers. <laughs> we were so close to winning. If they didn't have that. If they didn't have that. That was a win. Alright, I'll play one more. One more and then we're... We're done. I think we've... Either run our course, met our maker, or just <laughs> gotten unlucky. <laughs> that was like getting super unlucky with two mono green decks in a row. It seems seems unlikely. Our last deck was admittedly questionable, but it was it was fun though. Getting to go off with Cultivator Colossus is a lot of fun. This is a questionable keep, but we'll go for it. We got Gallagher Eaters into Bloated Contaminator into Cemetery Prowler. Ooh. Uh, yeah, we'll go with this. Yes, hello, Demir Control. Shut the fuck up. I don't like you. Good game. What are you good gaming? I hate you. <clears throat> Bring the ending. Yep, that's control. <laughs> good game, good game, good game, good game, good game. Ah, <sighs> well, we get to show him our throne. This is a very nice card to uh to show them. I guess exile the Gallic readers doesn't really matter too much. We get to play throne next turn. Throne can't be countered. Has Trample, can't be the target of non-green spells. This is the ideal matchup for Thrun. We made it, boys. We get to show them the Thrun. Though it's probably just going to sweep the board and then we cry. Or they kill it next turn because it's only indestructible on our turn. But... <laughs> uh... Alright, we're going to get rid of one of their instants in their graveyard here. Because that can cheapen up our Tyvar stand. And also, they only have instants in their graveyards, and we like to remove that. The Thrun, actually, they can't remove it, because despite it not being indestructible, it's a 5-5, but it also can't be targeted with green spells, or non-green spells. Can be the target of non-green spells, your opponent's control, or abilities from non-green sources, your opponent's control. Though it can be hit by Altawara, and it can also get... The lands are not colored, that's a, that's a fun fact. Lands are not colored. Our opponent. Uh, we'll go ahead and sacrifice the Prowler. Opponent. 
has the fucking nut draw. Uh, or they don't have the nut draw, and it's just that deck's better, you know. Just green being shit things. Please do not play a leer and then just murder us. That's the one thing I don't want to see. Like a leer into just a graveyard destruction. Yep, that's all they have to do. Spam their sorceries. I actually... This is... Mind Splice Apparatus is not that easy to get to go off. I might be wrong about that. But people haven't, for the most part, cracked that card, I don't think. Do we get to live this turn? Probably trying to cast things onto Thrun. Give a shit. Thrun doesn't give a shit. Thrun just tries his best. <laughs> yes. Yes. I'm not losing my mind. Alright. Five poisons. So they got us down to half health. I like how each card they cast does two damage to us. I like that part. Fucking, I hate. At first I was like, ooh, Toxic's a cool mechanic. And now I just, I'm over it. Yes, use your underground river. You need a double removal spell. Well, you need uh, the sack thing into... Yeah, you need your Veraskas Falls. You need, like, removal spell and Veraskas Fall. They're searching. They are searching for that removal spell and that Veraskas Fall. Every spell they cast is one mana here. So they have... Lots of opportunities. Or they can just kill us here because... <laughs> ah. Alright, I think we're done. Yep, they have another land. Ah. Each of these spells does effectively two damage. Please don't find any cards. Just, I want to see you staring at Gripple Lands. A grip of lands. I swear to god, a grip of lands. A grip of lands. A whole six card of lands. This is like a turn six kill after how much removal? If we get turn seven kill, my bad. Graskus fall, Graskus fall. <gasps> get wrecked! Get wrecked! Holy moly. Our opponent fizzled. We got so lucky there. Like, the amount of luck that we needed to win that one, even though we were going pretty aggro, despite the amount of removal. Oh my goodness. That is why Thrun is in this deck, is because I guess he does work. <laughs> Alright, let's head, hop into the deck tech and wrap this bad boy up. That is... Oh my goodness. We got a lot of things popping off here. But that's, this is Bloated Green. We are playing... Evolves Adaptive because, well, it's just a good beatdown. If we can play Evolved Adaptive into Creon Beast Color, or Simeon Simulacrum, or Cemetery Prowler, or Bloated Contaminator, or any of our <laughs> four or five drops, it gets bigger. The Gallagreeders doesn't make it bigger. Jugend Defense a Temple doesn't be make it bigger. That is the problem uh, with that, is we don't... Power and Toughness of Creatures sometimes can be a bit hard to uh make it actually grow we have a ton of three drops here to curve out into I'm rearranging the cards because made a mess of it but yeah evolving adaptive oil counters these oil counters can be proliferated with bloated contaminator to make it bigger i'm gonna go fix the music real quick uh and then besides that we have another one drop here tyler stand great card from Prexial all will be one you can see how we used it to actually kind of trade with our opponent when they least it least expected it. I think you can get people with this for a little while, but I think people will start realizing what this card does and play around it. Sort of like people have learned a bit more how to play around Wandering Emperor. Uh, you know, like, <laughs> don't attack into the deck with four mana open when it's not necessary and two of its white. 
Uh, so I think people will start to realize what this card does. Um, and this card does make some of your turns potentially awkward if you're planning to play around it because like Queer and Beast Caller, Evolving Adaptive, Galley Greeters, they all get bigger if you play like a card. So you want to generally be playing your creatures in your first main phase, uh, or often you want to be want to be playing your creatures in your first main phase. So that is a bit of an, a non-bow here uh, if you're going for the Tyvar's Stand. Uh, though immediately, if you're going for the Tyvar's Stand, you're probably just going to be holding up mana anyways. Um, or well, yeah, yeah. Well, it is non-bow because if you were to play these creatures. You're probably using up the mana that you wanted to use for your Tyvar stand. But if your opponents don't block, you can sometimes like maybe bluff them into not blocking, uh, which is nice. Uh, and then we got Gallag Readers here because, well, it does everything that you could want potentially. Uh, the main mode we're probably going to be leaning into here is plus one, plus one counters because we're just trying to beat our opponent. We're trying to, to make it end as fast as possible, right? Um, so plus one plus one counters is a good source here. If in a pinch, if we need it, we can create a treasure token to actually be able to cast our Evolve Spinal Baron and our Thrun Barrier of Silence. Most of the time we should be able to get to our three drops without too much of a problem, but we can also potentially use a treasure to get there. We are playing 23 lands, one to save you. Uh, and then Queer and Beast Caller, probably one of the most important cards in this deck besides, uh, Bloated Contaminator, uh, is thrown, uh, the Queer and Beast Caller because this card just gets big. And that's why the, having these many, or these one drops is important, these two drops, and then having a bunch of other creatures to play. Uh, that's why we're only playing like two Jugan Defends the Temple, uh, because we want to be able to actually cast creature spells to pump this up. Because whenever we cast a creature spell, we put a plus one plus one counter on it. This also is nice because regardless if the spell gets countered or not, we still get the plus one plus one. Then when it dies, we can distribute those plus one plus ones among the creatures we control, uh, or among any number of creatures we control, and uh, that's nice because we can put counter a, a counter on Bloated Contaminator. We really want to get counters on Bloated Contaminator because it has Trample, and then also if it's able to connect with the opponent, even if it's able to do just one damage, we get the Proliferate effect, which is big because that can help grow our entire board. This can help us to really snowball against uh, decks that fail to develop on like turn one, turn two, and turn three, and we we successfully actually draw a good hand, you know? Um, so yeah, Queer and Beast Caller are huge in this deck. Another huge card, Simeon Simulacrum. I think this card is probably the best card to be playing in like green aggro decks as well, or just aggro decks in general, uh, because the ability to put plus one, plus one counters on a creature that doesn't have summoning sickness makes this card really really nice and then it can also put plus one counters on bloated contaminator again we want it to be able to actually connect with the opponent and it has trample so making it bigger helps us actually trample in and then if we can proliferate it gets even bigger right uh and it makes everything else bigger so that's the nice thing bloated contaminator uh proliferating plus one counters from Simeon Simulacrum and then we get a blocker on defense and we don't care if this thing dies because then we can unearth it potentially and swing in hasty and make our contaminator or our beast color or anything else even bigger then we have Jugan defends the temple um or sorry I skipped over bloated contaminator we already talked about it 4-4 really good uh stats for the most part uh and then when it deals combat damage, proliferate, that's the whole thing this deck's built around. Trample is also very important here. Jugan's Defend the Temple, I haven't, we didn't get to see it in play here, but um, this is nice because it can act as ramp here because it creates a monk and then we get plus one counters, which is what we want to do. And then it flips into Remnant of the Rising Star, which is also really huge because, well, this helps turn everything we draw afterwards into a threat. So we draw the Evolving Adaptive and we have like four mana open well this says whenever another creature enters the battlefield under your control you may pay x when you do put x plus one plus one counters on that creature as long as you have five or more modified creature remnant of the rising star gets plus five plus five and has trample so we have a sort of like super end game here if we get five or more like 
modified creatures, which is nice. This becomes a 7-7 seven, seven flyer, and it only costs us 3 mana. Really cool. But also just means when we draw our Gallag Readers, we can pump a bunch of mana into it and make it even bigger threat right off the bat. Um, so this card's really nice, and then it works well with Bloated Contaminator because it's a Saga and it has lore counters. So if we play Bloated Contaminator and get to connect after having Jugan's... Uh, if we have Bloated Contaminator and then play a Jugan Defense the Temple, Bloated Contaminator hits in, and we get to move... or put another lore counter on this, so this moves it to... Uh, like the plus one plus one counters or flipping it over much faster also it's really nice to have a flyer here to like finish off the opponents and then we can also tie our stand onto the the Ronin of the rising star which is cool uh, so that can be like a good way to connect the last bit of damage um, it also is just a really nice card overall but we don't have tons of these because it's a bit slow um, and we generally want to be finishing off our opponent pretty fast then we have a Volve Spinoderm here Really nice card. I think this is definitely like another great card to be playing because, well, it has hexproof when it enters the battlefield because it enters with four oil counters and as long as it has two or fewer, it has trample, but otherwise it has hexproof. So four oil counters is not two or fewer, so it has hexproof. And then you remove an oil counter at the beginning of each upkeep. So you get hexproof when you play it and then it has hexproof the next turn, then it has trample that turn and then trample the next turn and then it's dead the following turn. Um, but we don't really care about it dying because we're really just trying to end the game. Um, and then we can also proliferate with Bloated Contaminator here, so we can potentially even keep it from sacking if necessary. Uh, we can also proliferate it up to give it Hexproof again, which is interesting. Thrun here, we have three of them in the deck. I think I originally said two, uh, but we have three of them in the deck. This spell, we saw it put in work against that uh, Demir control deck, which I am so happy. Um, I know people are really hyped about this card, and for once I actually got to see the power of it. The ability to not be countered is nice, uh, and then it can't be targeted with non-green spells uh, from your opponents. Very nice. And then when it's your turn, it has indestructible. So then you can just go ham swinging in with it. Um, it's a good good thing to put counters on as well but usually uh you might not see this card very often because you're hopefully going to end games before then but it is nice against those control matchups if you're able to top deck it fast enough otherwise uh gg <laughs> so i hope you enjoyed the deck let me know what you think would uh if you have like any changes you'd make to the this mono green like aggro deck i really think you just Gotta go ham, and you gotta hope that you have a good hand. Uh, we saw some work from like Thrun finishing out a turn or like a game on turn seven, but we also some saw when we finished out a game on like turn four because our opponent didn't do much. Those are your kind of ideal games, and then the other games, I don't know what to say about them. Let me know. Uh, what do you think? Have a nice uh, morning, evening, night, afternoon, wherever you're, whenever and wherever you're watching. Ciao.